Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about a potential upcoming snowy pattern. And look, this pattern actually looks very cold and very snowy, so I'll be showing you guys that in just a moment. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. And I'd also highly recommend that you check out our very exciting Patreon page and our very exciting store. You can find both of those things in the description and the pinned comment down below. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think that we will have any big snowstorms for this pattern we're going to be talking about, or do you think it's going to kind of go down quietly and just very cold? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now, let's get into this video, and first things first, we're going to be taking a look at the upper air pattern, and one disclaimer I want to make before we get into it is that this is a potential pattern. This isn't a for sure going to happen pattern. We talk about very long range things in this channel and it's it drops off the accuracy a little bit. So we like to talk about the maybes and not only the definites. So I, I just want you to have a firm understanding of that before we go any further. Let's talk about that upper air pattern. This is what I would call kind of a merged jet pattern, kind of just one jet stream for the most part. You can see it in those orange and green shades. Uh, we can see it in the upper air winds. There's one jet and it's kind of on a slant just going further north as it heads east. This is as we head towards about November 30th, which is going to be a Monday, by the way. You can see the southern jet heading in through Southern California and you can follow it all the way through the Gulf and then up the East Coast. We can also see that northern jet coming through Canada, through the Dakotas, down, and it merges with that southern jet uh, throughout the Gulf and then up the East Coast. This is a classic snowy and cold pattern for the eastern United States. Oftentimes, we see major nor'easters and major blizzards in a pattern like this, so that's why we're going to watch it very closely. This could be a very extreme pattern we see ourselves in for the very last few days of November and for the first week of December. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at some other factors and start getting the simulated radar and taking a look at some of these actual storms that models are calling for. Now for contrast, I wanted to show you guys kind of the 500 geopotential height, 500 millibar geopotential height, and this really just gives you a good understanding of what the temperatures are going to be like, where there's a trough, where there's a ridge. This is what we're looking at right now, and this is really just a flat zonal pattern kind of just a little bit warmer everywhere. There is some colder areas, but for the most part, just warmer everywhere, not defined. You can't see any troughs or ridges, really. Let's just take it to about, again, Monday, November 30th, and you can definitely tell where the ridges and troughs are at this point. There's a major trough in the eastern United States and a massive ridge for the western United States. We call this a positive PNA pattern, and that's where we see warmer than normal conditions out west. And that actually encourages colder than normal conditions in the east because it really can't go to the west. And in this frame, you can see it can't go uh, towards Greenland or eastern Canada. So it's forced to head into the eastern United States, especially when coupled with a negative AO, which sends the cold air down. We are going to have all of those things. We'll talk about it a little bit later. Here's our first frame of simulated radar. Uh, and we're taking a look first off at kind of the pattern right now. We have a snowstorm, a little bit of a minor one heading in through the Ohio Valley, Great Lakes, and eventually New England. I'm going to be making a Patreon post about that, so if you aren't a patron, I highly recommend you join. It can You can join for only $3. We're going to be making a huge post about this minor snowstorm, so if you are curious about that, you can do so today. What we're going to do is we're going to move on, actually, and we're going to take a look at our first kind of storm that is caused by the southern jet. We'll take a look at that in just a moment. All right, now here we are, and this is going to be by about, well, Thanksgiving at about 4 p.m. Everybody will be eating their Thanksgiving dinner at this point, most likely. I don't know why, but everybody kind of eats dinner earlier on Thanksgiving. Does anybody else's family do that? Let me know in the comments down below if you guys eat it like 2 or 3 on Thanksgiving. The only day, the only day of the entire year anybody eats at that time, I feel like, is on Thanksgiving for absolutely no reason. So let me know if you guys do that as well. By this point, you can see there's practically no precipitation being caused by that southern jet. There is some for the east coast, but it's not really leading to much along the coast, outside of New Jersey and Pennsylvania, potentially. But as we move it towards the next day at about 4 or 5 p.m., so only 24 hours, we can see a storm begins to develop there for Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Arkansas. Also notice a trough is moving in from the north-central United States by this point. All right. As we take it to about 2 p.m. on Sunday, that storm is still brewing, uh, and you can see it actually heads north well before it gets to the coast. So this is not a nor'easter. This is kind of like a, 
uh, a cutter of sorts that cuts north before a nor'easter would. Uh, so it is a similar storm, but it just further inland here. You can see a trough developing for the central United States here. Uh, and by the time we reach about 2 a.m. on Monday, this actually leads to a moderate snowstorm, if not a major snowstorm here for portions of Tennessee, Kentucky, Indiana, Ohio, and Michigan. And the one thing I want you to know is it's not really important the exacts with these storms. The more important thing is the pattern and just seeing that it is showing these storms and it is showing the cold air. And really, in my opinion, with when you get into the medium to long range, the things that stick around on a model run are the patterns, the teleconnections, things of that nature. The things that do not stick around are single storms, uh, snowfall for certain regions. Those are things that can very much so change beyond 100 hours out or so. Uh, but if you see a pattern on a model run, that's the type of thing that you can really see it really stick to, especially even, I mean, even up to 10 days out, you can see a pattern or even a, uh, two weeks. So this is really more about the pattern, less about the storm. What we're going to do is we're going to move on where we're going to begin to see a major nor'easter develop along the east coast and actually see some extreme cold air move into the eastern United States. All of that coming up in just a moment. All right, now here we are taking a look, and this is going to be by about 2 p.m. on Monday, November 30th. So after Thanksgiving weekend, kind of heading towards December, everybody's going to be setting up their Christmas decorations by this point. We're still seeing snowfall for the Great Lakes and the Ohio Valley, but again, that's not too important. The more important thing here is we're in a nor'easter pattern, and we have the cold air in place. Let's move it on one more frame, and actually it gets even colder and more extreme by, the, by this frame. It's so cold, and the trough is so intense, I don't even think we can get any more storms at this point, if it was to play out exactly like this. This is by December 1st, Tuesday, uh, at about 2 p.m. This is extreme cold there, uh, a very major trough, and then we actually have a very positive PNA out west as well. Uh, and here's the actual temperature anomaly, so this is what it would look like uh, for the temperature anomalies. Look at that, just extreme cold. The greens is anywhere from about 10 to 15 degrees below average. And then those blues within the green uh, are actually 15 to 30 degrees below average. That dot, so we can see that there's deeper blues in there for kind of the Appalachian Mountains, or I guess the Smoky Mountains there. That's where we're at about 30.7 degrees below average, this model is saying. So very extreme cold is going to move in likely, or at least possibly, uh, to end the month of November and to begin the month of December. This upcoming pattern is looking very extreme. Let's just go ahead and take a look at quickly what our GFS says because the GFS goes out even further than the European model. This is by December 7th. It has plenty of nor'easters developing along the East Coast. So there's a lot of potential there for potentially an East Coast snowstorm. Uh, possibly one of the best setups of the winter. Uh, it's not very common to see a setup this good. So we're going to watch it closely this will probably go down as a top five setup for the entire winter, which is crazy considering how early it is just to begin the month of December, but it really is a really good setup, uh, and it's one of those situations where it actually reminds me of December of 2010, that Boxing Day blizzard, the, um, the snowstorm around Christmas, if you guys remember that, along the East Coast. Uh, I got a ton of snowfall from that one. I remember it vividly, uh, and we had a very similar setup, and it was in December as well, and it was in a La Nina as well, so there's many similarities here, actually. I'm not saying a storm like that is going to happen, but a similar setup could definitely happen. Um, and we could have a storm of varying intensities, obviously. What we're going to do is we're going to move on, and we're going to take a look at our teleconnections. I'm going to show you guys exactly why this pattern is going to happen, and we're going to talk a little bit about how long it could last. Now, in order to show you guys how extreme this kind of pattern flip we're going to have is, this is the forecast on uh, October 27th for the teleconnections according to the European model. This was for the AO. Look at how positive it is. Positive means warm, okay, for all of the United States pretty much. Uh, and it had across the board just warm throughout the entire model run. Uh, North Atlantic Oscillation. This causes some colder air to make its way into the eastern United States, and it also sets up a really good pattern for nor'easters in a negative phase, but in the positive phase, it does the opposite. No nor'easters, no cold, uh, and this was in a positive phase across the board as well. And then for the PNA, you want this one to be positive because in positive, it, it forces that cold air into the eastern United States. In a negative phase, all of that cold air goes to the western United States. And as you can see, it was all negative across the board. Now let's take a look at the current teleconnection forecast. 
As you can see, until about the 26th, we will be in a negative PNA, but it goes strongly positive by the time we're exiting the month of November and entering the month of December. And you can see all the way at the end of the model run, we actually have no end in sight for that positive PNA. Also, our North Atlantic oscillation, it's gonna stay positive until about the 28th and then go negative until the end of the model run. So we don't know how long that's going to last after that. And then our AO even, which again, causes cold air to enter the United States in a negative phase. And really it suppresses that cold air in the positive phase. But as you can see, it goes negative around the 29th and it stays neutral or negative until the end of the model run. So what this tells me is this model is picking up on a very favorable pattern for cold and snow in the Eastern United States. It's that simple. We even have our European Ensemble model here, which goes out even further. And this is for the PNA and it keeps it positive throughout all the way to at least the 7th of December. So this, this is potentially a one week plus long pattern, which would give us ample amounts of opportunities for cold and snow for the central and Eastern United States. Again, it's only a possibility, not a guarantee. But if this was to play out this way, it would be a top five setup this winter, like I've said, uh, and there's going to be some opportunities for snow. Even if this pattern happens, there's no guarantee that there will be snow. It's going to need storms to line up at the right time with that cold air. So there's a lot to talk about moving forward over the coming weeks. I'm very excited. I hope you are as well. And there's going to be plenty of videos on the way for this pattern, especially if we see it play out anywhere near what that is showing. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, do you think we're going to have any big nor'easters for the month of December? And Hamoud said, I honestly think we could get a big nor'easter. All of the models are at least showing something trying to form. And I think that's a really good outlook there. And it really is true. Uh, the important thing is that the models are trying to show nor'easters form. Uh, if it shows a giant blizzard along the East Coast 240 hours out, it means nothing. But if it shows a consistent pattern that allows for storms like that to happen, that means a lot more than it just showing a storm that far out. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our diamond patrons, Michael Codalessa, Alicia Davis, Cat Bites, Terry Curtis, Madbirds, It's Jay, Cindy Klein, Kellen Manhart, Felix Wheatfield, Michael Buell, Mariah Vieira, Noah Harley, and Mark J, alongside our platinum patrons, Adam S, Alan Belemo, Donna Carnes, Justin Quantrell, Dovey Nagel, James Wade, and Cameron Marshall. If you would like to end up on this patron end screen, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and the pinned comment down below. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.